You know, a lot of people ask how I got into donating to various causes and how I got involved in even homelessness along the way and popped out of it. Well, it's a very interesting story. My mom has a lot to do with it. At six years old, we didn't have any money. There was my mother, my brother, and I. We had a deadbeat dad, left us before we were two. But she took us at Christmas time to downtown Los Angeles. We had little cars going around in circles. It was pretty cool. Anyways, and decorations in the window, she gave my brother and I a dime and told us, boys, hold half of it each, give it to the man ringing the bell in the bucket. We put it in this bucket. We said, Mom, why do we give that man a dime? That's like two soda pops. This is 1951. Two soda pops, three candy bars. And Mom said, boys, that's the Salvation Army. Now, they take care of people that have no place to live and no food. And we don't have a lot of money, but we could afford a dime this year. Boys, always remember in life, give a little something to those in need. There'll always be somebody that's not as well off as you are, no matter where you are or how far down you are. Try and help someone along the way. It stuck with me. First time I was homeless was two and a half, oh my God, uh, date over. First time I was homeless, I was 22 and a half years old, and I had a two and a half year old son. I was uh, working as the master of ceremonies at the second annual sports vacation recreational vehicle show. And I had a check coming in at the end of the week. Well, I came home and I drove our one car up to where we lived. And as I was getting out of the car and going up towards our apartment door, my wife, we were very young by, we got married at 20 and 19 years old. My wife was coming down the stairs and she said, I'm going to the store, she took the keys. By the time I got through the door, I saw my little boy, two and a half years old, kind of just sitting there on top of a pile of clothes with a note that basically said, I can't handle being a mom anymore. He'll be much better off with you. Good luck. Now, what I didn't know also was that she had planned this for a few months. She had not paid the rent for a few months and kept the money, and I didn't know that. Uh, she wiped out what little we had in the savings account in the bank uh, and took the only car we had. So unbeknownst to me, two days later, I was evicted, completely evicted. Power shut off, the landlord, she just really timed this one. And I had this little kid with me, two and a half years old, and now I had to be mom and dad, and that was really a bummer. I had no car. So I ended up borrowing a 1951 Cadillac with a broken water pump from someone that was very, very dear. I had put water in it every four hours, and that's kind of how we got going. Second time I was homeless is when I started John Paul Mitchell Systems. I knew I needed half a million dollars to start John Paul Mitchell Systems. Had to have that. So we had the backer lined up. I had a good job at the time, lived in a nice house, and I left everything I had because half a million dollars was coming in down the street and I was going to start a company. So I left it all behind. I left what money I had with my wife. We weren't getting along well at all. And uh, the best car. And I took the older car. It was a good one, but an older car. It ran good. Uh, down the hill to get my money. I would check into an efficiency hotel. And then, because I'd be traveling a lot, and eventually get an apartment. When I went down the hill, the backer pulled out. No money. Well, it was later that afternoon that a friend of mine found me and said, John Paul, please call Dick Holthouse, direct collect in England. He doesn't have the best news for you. So I got a hold of him. For him, it was the wee hours of the morning. And he said, JP, the backer pulled out. The reason he pulled out was inflation in the United States was 12.5%, unemployment 10%, actually over 10%. Interest rates, if you could get a loan, prime rate was 17% interest. And we still had hostages that I ran and we waited in line for gasoline. That was the environment in the United States in uh, 1980 and 1981. Well, there I was, a few hundred dollars in my pocket, too proud to ask my mother if I could have my old room back for my, uh, in the home and she could feed me for a couple months to get back on my feet. And I just left my living situation. I was too proud, stupid but very, very proud. So I went by and saw my mom and uh, you know, I was borrowed a couple hundred dollars from her. I said, mom, I'll give it back to you. She said, son, you're doing really well in life. Why do you need a few hundred dollars? I said, mom, I'll give it back to you. I'm starting something new. Uh, and that's when I decided I'm gonna make it on my own. I'm not gonna tell her. Lived in my car, showered down at Griffith Park because they had tennis courts there with showers in it and uh, learned how to live off very little and go and sell products door to door. When I was homeless. On my mind was not, oh my God, how did I get here? Who's to blame on this? What was in my mind was, okay, after I cried a little bit, the two and a half year old son not knowing what to do, no money, no nothing. 
my first thought was, okay, I need to get some money. I don't want to go to my mom's house and tell her how bad things are. I need to get money to eat. And we're, we're sources of money. We don't have any money. So I went around collecting soda pop bottles from empty lots. And at that time, a grocery store or any liquor store would give you two cents for a little one, five cents for a big one. Went around, collected a lot of them, cashed in, and that's how we got the money. And so we were able to eat. Now, when I got evicted out of the house uh, three days later, uh, this is when I was 22 and a half years old, when I was completely evicted, now we had that car I had borrowed to live in, and we went more towards fast foods that were halfway prepared for you. Those are the early days of fast food, just to eat. A few days later, uh, a friend of mine found me because he knew I was hanging out, talked to some friends of mine named Lee Meyer. And Lee said, Johnny, I've got a house with an extra room. He was a biker, a real heavy duty biker. And he says, you and your son could live here to get on your feet, uh, no problem. We could have some of the biker mamas take care of your son while you're working and uh, let's move on, we're buddies. And that was a big helping hand. I think whether you have money or don't have money, it's very important to give back because it's we the people, the individuals, that make the planet better so that this doesn't happen again and makes it better for other people. It's we the people. If we don't help others out and people start going down, then what do we expect as future customers or future people to help us out if we were in trouble? So I feel that every human being has the obligation, pay a little bit of rent for being on this planet, to do something good for their city or their state or their country or even the world to make it a better place to live. Now, if you don't have any money, it's okay. You could volunteer like I do when I have any money at uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, up at Griffith Park in California, helping feed the homeless, or do something to help somebody else out to make the world a better place to live. Now, who benefits by this? Whenever you do something for somebody else, and ask absolutely nothing in return. You get the greatest high you could ever have in your life and it makes you more connected with the whole planet. A lot of people think they have to give a huge amount of money to make the impact. Well, I would disagree with them. Because I remember back my mom, where we had almost nothing, knew the importance of giving two little boys a dime to put in the bucket because she knew those dimes became many dimes, many dollars, and many $10 bills. But every little bit gives back, every little bit. So no matter how little you give or how little of your time you donate, you've done a little something. That little something makes a difference.